was Nina Kravitz. Nina Kravitz, who I went to go see the other day at the Wolverhampton Assembly for a Retextured Live, a festival put on by Crank Brothers that was fucking awesome. She debuted an audiovisual, she debuted an audiovisual um, experience, party sort of thing, that was really interesting. Now, again, it wasn't to my taste. It probably wasn't something that I'd want to go and see. But I can kind of see where the vision is. I can kind of see what she's aiming for and what she wants to do. So let me go um, to my profile and I can show you some of the things that I posted that might have made a bit more sense. So essentially, um, I didn't really have any understanding of what the, uh, what the whole idea behind it was. Because I remember seeing a few articles about it prior to Coachella happening. Um, Nina Kravitz is going to be performing live at the, on the main stage at Coachella. And I was like, fuck, what an amazing booking for somebody like Nina Kravitz, right? That's... You know, for the most part, those kind of festivals, they always kind of relegate all the electronic acts to like a certain electronic stage or certain electronic venue, but they don't necessarily put them on like, you know, main slot uh, in the evening. I think she came on just before Childish Gambino or a few other people, and then you get to kind of do your thing. But there's no real details about it. Then it transpires that on an, you know, it's going to be an audiovisual experience. It's going to be something, um, it's going to be like a precursor to her releasing a documentary called Homecoming about her return to Moscow. So I'm assuming she's moving back home and kind of uh, making her base there, which kind of ties in with her record label. So loads of good things happening. Then I watch it on live stream and it was just, it just, it blew me away because it was just so unexpected. I didn't really expect it to go that direction in her career. So essentially she comes out and um, on the stage, there's loads of electronic music. There's a couch, there's a table. And then behind it, there's a massive projection, like a screen, right? Which everyone kind of does nowadays because it's a really um, cool an easy way, easy I'm going to say way, to kind of um, create an immersive experience on stage without having too many props, right? Because essentially, you know, having people come in and move things up uh, around you while you're dancing and move isn't probably the wisest thing to do. So maybe having a screen that can project different um, things on the screen, you can have maybe a different object on the stage that you can change would be a good idea. Similar to what Tyler the Creator did at the Golf Wine Festival where you kind of had, um, you kind of had, uh, what's, the, what's the fucking album called? The one that came out recently. Um, he had kind of had the, that play out in the background with like, you know, forests and trees and shit. And then he had a kind of like a ramp. So then that ramp was kind of projected on, that ramp was, the, the projection on the ramp was sort of like, it was on, he was lying on a hill or on the side of a park. So they made it look like that. Do you know what I mean? So, but then if that was in the past, you would have had to build something and have it, you know, towed in left and right. But essentially with this performance, you could just have it projected on the screen. She did the same sort of thing. And on the screen, it had like random images, but sometimes it had an image of like the top of the deck. So she was DJing, like similar to, um, the Jeff Mills documentary, that the famous one where he's mixing. Then she had a, a screen coming from the right, a screen coming from the left, a screen coming from the back. Just really, really amazing, cool stuff. Really, really cool. And then she started, and I thought it would be like an M, it feel, it feel it'd be like an 808 thing, right? Like her playing live, like you know, like um, like an arm or whatever it may be called, like a Henrik Schwartz, that, that kind of live stuff, right? You're playing stuff with Ableton, and you're sort of like adding loops, you're adding percussion, you're adding instruments, you're adding bass lines. I don't know. That's why I kind of thought it would be. And she pulls out the microphone and she starts singing, right? Sort of singing, like talking in Russian, saying stuff in English. Words are coming up behind her. The, the lights are changing, loads of smoke. She's doing that weird dance thing that she does behind the stage when she's having a good time. And it's just like a really bizarre performance, right? It's quite bizarre. And I kind of captured a little bit of it here on my on my Twitter so you guys can see. And if you're listening by the podcast app, then I'm sorry. But you'll be able to hear it. You'll play it from there. I can hear that. So that's her, right? Doing her dance thing. And and this is at the stage where she's sort of like, essentially she, was, she came out in a long black leather trench coat with a notebook, I think, in her hand and then big black um, cow, like riding boots. And she was kind of like dancing, doing her weird singing thing. And then throughout the whole performance, she'd like take stuff off, like take off her jacket slowly, write something down, think about something, like read, da, 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 sing. And then there's one really cute part of the thing where she's like, oh, I'm really nervous, isn't it? Thank you so much for like letting me do this. I'm really nervous. And she's doing her thing and then people were whistling and stuff. And then it kind of got into her normal sort of like, you know, techno, tech house sound, sounding sort of beats. But it was all kind of really ambient and really kind of weird and all stuff like, you know, maybe... And I think for the most part, from what I heard on the, on social media and from, you know, talking to people or not, communicating with people on social media and going, you know, because everyone was kind of tagging tagging her and, and using the hashtag Coachella when I was on Twitter and stuff, the the, the reaction was kind of split, right? And I'll read it later, but let's just play out this just a little bit. So here's on top of the table, you know, kind of doing her white people dance, you know, that kind of a performance dancing thing that white people love to do. <laughs> You remember that video of, the, of that yoga couple? They're doing that kind of like weird yoga and they're like shaking on the chair. This is what it reminds me of kind of in a little bit. 
But you know, again, it's just an excellent music. It also reminds me of any other girl that I've seen at Grease Mueller in the, in the early hours in the morning, tripping her balls off, wearing the most amazing outfit in the middle of Berlin, right? This is what I've basically seen, or in, in Berkheim or Panama, this is what you see, right? Club kids know what club kids do. Like she's an OG when it comes to that malarkey, right? And I bet she's strong cold server as well, which makes it even more cool, right? But again, the reception was not the best when it came to her performance, right? And I was kind of, I'll read a little bit of it now that I saw with uh, Nina Kravitz. Coachella, right? So, um, again, the performance wasn't, the, the, the reaction wasn't as what she might have expected it to be. But I have to give her credit, right? Where credit is due, I'll say, I'll just say my part before I read everyone else's uh, things that they said about her. Again, it wasn't something to my taste. It wasn't something that I'd probably necessarily go to, but I have to respect her for taking a chance and going this direction with her career. Because, again, she doesn't need to She doesn't need to do this. I think for somebody of her level, when it comes to DJing, I think she's probably done everything that she needs to do in DJing, right? She's probably played at all the best places. She released music under all, with all the best labels, collaborated with all the best people, did edits, played back-to-back with some of her heroes, blah, 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 blah. Now she's got her own label that she's fostering talent with. And I think maybe they just reaches a bit of a... They reach, she probably she probably reached a bit of Truman War, right? She probably reached a limit. She wants to see what else that she can do, especially while she's still, you know, of 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 um, good sound mind, right? She still has a passion for it. Um, she's still um, relevant in this industry too, which is very important because, you know, how finical or how fickle this this industry can be essentially electronic music like the next hot thing comes around or so everyone forgets about Nina Kravitz she's just to keep reinventing herself in order to kind of stay alive right something I've kind of learned throughout the years from P Diddy who would say like you know every name jump he does is like a calculated move it's a effort to if for it's an, it's a it's a conceded effort for him to keep himself relevant and to keep himself motivated keep himself fresh because every name change comes with a different persona a different attitude a different kind of music right whatever it may be um that's cool so I, I get it in that respect. And I always have to say that if she did that performance at Printworks, if she performed like that at Fold, if she did that X or Y, if she did that at Corsica Studios, she'd fucking kill it, right? Everyone will love it. E1, Oval Space, whatever you make, whatever venue you want to call it, she'd smash it. But I think in that kind of arena, that space, I mean, for the most part, it's just not far fresh to say, I'd say in the most part, the, the, the average North American festival goer, especially a person that goes to Coachella, probably isn't that familiar or isn't that knowledgeable, isn't that... Um, informed about electronic music as most other North American people are, right? It's a bit, it's like the commercial end of it. So I think for the most part, people in that crowd would have known her from her DJing, right? From maybe hearing her play at a big festival, whether it's Time Warp, whatever it may be, right? So maybe for her to go in there and do a live set in front of that audience probably wasn't the best place to do it. But again, like I said, I think it takes massive balls in the name of uh, uh, Troy Dini Cojones to go on the Coachella stage and perform for the first time live. It takes massive, massive balls. And again, I think in general, maybe as a positioning thing, it probably was better idea for her to do it there because it positions her straight away in that top tier of live performance. Because, you know, there's not a lot of live performers out, especially in the electronic music space, that are actually good, right? Let's be honest, right? I know a lot of people are digging around on the social about it, but there's not a lot of people that are actually good. There's some people that people pretend are good, but they're not actually entertaining for the most part. Um, so maybe just putting herself on that stage is going to position her at a high level. Maybe, I don't know. But I'm not too sure if it was the right move going forward. And I think a lot of people on social kind of agree with it. Um, da, da, da. Oh, but this is, again, this is kind of going into my set. Let's say this this person says, I'm not trusting the 16-year-old follower children of Coachella to judge Nina Kravitz's live set. Anyone with clout see it, heard it, or it got weird, right? Clout, that's a bit weird. Um, really takes balls to do what Nina Kravitz done, bring into Coachella a performance of art at masses. Again, like I said, many, not, many, many may not get it, but it's a, a serious artistic statement. Nina Kravitz pulled... The, any publicity is good publicity trick at Coachella. The entire team, this is on her brain. They're gonna talk about me no matter what. I can do, I can do whatever I want on this stage in front of all these people, and they'll know my name. It's genius. <laughs> That's true. Maybe Hi, someone, please tell me what song is going on here. How, why, and really, right? So this is um people. What someone recorded the entire set? Thirty seconds of it. This is what I. Yeah. So this is her. What is this? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's not good, is it, man? That isn't good, is it? But that's not good, is it, bro? Okay, uh, okay, um, after watching some new Kravitz videos at Coachella, I find myself asking, what the fuck is she doing? 
A second Forza Nina Kravitz set to be next weekend. I'm so confused it's Nina Kravitz set. What is going on here? What the heck is going on? Nina Kravitz at Coachella. I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of hate, but I'm not sure what the hate is actually about. What's this kind of thing? What is... Hey, Shandy, why don't you try and find out what's going on, you absolute dullard? What is going on? I'm seeing a lot of people talk about it, but I don't know what's going on. Fucking find the video, then. Bloody hell, some people. What's wrong with Nina Kravitz at Coachella? I haven't listened to it. Okay, enough. Charlotte the Wit looking at Nina Kravitz' performance. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I watched it in your camera like today and I'm actually sobbing. What the fuck? The weirdest thing I've ever seen rolling around the stage, just standing there looking in the mirror. And, and, and all, I loved it. I loved it. The 20 acts that we had to see. All due respect, but who the fuck gave Nina Kravitz a mic at Coachella? Credit, and then here's me. Credit to Nina Kravitz, though, it takes some balls uh, to debut an immersive electronic performance like this at Coachella, all play, of all places. Not for me, but I like the idea. Just hope it's, it's an add-on to her DJ. And again, I don't know, man. It's really hard to tell. Again, it's really hard to tell anyone what to do with anything, right? Because it just... Because you never know. She could get better, right? I'm sure her first DJ set wasn't good, right, Nina Kravitz? I'm sure she got better over time. But also, I'm not too sure how... The problem is nowadays, if Nina Kravitz was around nowadays and she looked the way that she did and she was, I don't know, 18, someone would book her at Tomorrowland, right? Which is the worst thing to do because I think, you know, they'd book her essentially because she's a good-looking woman. And imagine she put together a couple of good tunes on SoundCloud, right? Just two that she happened to, like, pull out of her ass because, you know... You've got the, your whole entire life to make good, two really good songs. It's the songs after that that really get really difficult. But imagine someone finds a young Nina Kravitz on, on SoundCloud now. They would 100% book her at Tomorrowland. They would 100% book her at Time Warp, at fucking whatever festival you call, you want to name, right? She'd get booked straight away. And I think that's the, that's the problem because essentially what happens is that a young Nina Kravitz wouldn't get the time to develop, right? You wouldn't necessarily time, get time to hone your craft and get better. We've kind of seen the same thing happen with Peggy Goo, where, you know, she's a, a relatively good DJ. She makes good productions, but is she at the level that her bookings uh, um, would... Is she, is she at the level of her bookings? Like, the number of her bookings? Probably not. But again, DJ World isn't really about your... It's not really about that. It's around your popularity, right? That time when Steph Trucks and Jamie Truck and Jamie Jones were everywhere, they weren't necessarily getting booked that much because, you know, they were the best DJs around. They were getting booked that much because they were the talk of the town. Especially that that back in, the, back in that day, social media wasn't even as prevalent as it was nowadays. Um, they would get talked about all the time. They had all the famous interviews, great, great um, articles on them. Like you know, it was a really love or hate relationship with them. So essentially, if you're a promoter, it's an easy, easy booking to make because people that don't like them are gonna go and see them just to go see if they're shit, and the people that love them are gonna go see them because they're fanboys. So I think if you're Nina Kravitz, maybe because of your name, you probably sh- you probably getting given opportunity. You probably shouldn't be get given because you need to hone your craft and get better over time. But it also a side of me that's saying she. There's also a side of me that's like. I'm in no place to tell anyone what they should do or shouldn't do, right? Because you never know. She could absolutely smack it out of the park. And, and you know, what we say is good and what we say is bad is quite subjective. But judging from her comments on social and stuff, it looks like a lot of people are also agreeing with the fact that it wasn't good, right? And they don't really like it. Um, yeah, so so here's a... Here's a fucking hell, brutal, man, the internet. Um, so here's a here's a here's like a... Post again here on the interwebs. I'm pretty sure she doesn't read it. She probably shouldn't read it. Someone on the team should probably tell her not to read these comments because you know it's probably gonna put her off and stuff. But here's another video on Instagram, right? Of the performance. So let's, let's play this. Oh, it's that short shit, and it says, "Ah." Uh, um, Nina Kravitz, this is the first part of my Coachella show that I did with uh, uh, whatever. How much do you want to get? How much do you want to bet that you won't do this again the next week? Next weekend? I, I, how much do you want to bet it's just her straight DJing? Um, and the first comment, horrible. You need some honest people around you, uh, you Nina. This is shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Replies back to, oh, you checked my profile to come up with some witty. Let's see. Uh, what did it say here? Whatever. Uh, shut, shut the fuck up. Exactly my thoughts when I heard this. Uh, you're delusional if you think this is good. Uh, what was it? Get, get the asset back. So sorry it turned out so bad. Maybe next time get people around you who will be honest and tell you what's on a good level, good taste, and in range of your skill will save you the feeling of embarrassment for both the spectators and performers. I don't think she's going to be embarrassed though. I just think you need to you need to do these things, right, in order to get good. Um, 
Nina, we love you, but what is this horrible noise? Maybe next time just call this show different just so the people expecting the techno set don't get upset. Well, she did say it was different. She did say it was audiovisual experience. What do you expect? So is Nina Grand, is Nina, so is Ariana Grande about to throw down a techno set tonight? A bunch of average Joes telling an established DJ who's who, who's who, who has a push boundaries of music for the last good knows how long. Take a bow for your courage for carrying on a pushing on boundary of music, taking us out of our comfort zone, teaching us how to look into the future of music. Exactly, because it is again. What 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 can she? She's Nina Kravitz. What she can she do? She she can't really, she actually go play at a bar and get play this. Song. I mean, she she can't. You know, her level. She just can't do that. She has to go and play at big stages. So I think uh, essentially, you know, she's been walled in by her success. But you know, let her let her get better over time. That one wasn't good. You know, subjectively, I would say it wasn't good. But I think over time it could get better. But again. I think, imagine if you went to that set expecting a, a, a hard-nosed techno set from her and you get that. You're like, oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, so that wasn't good. Um, but, again, she ended the set by doing a whirly pearly swirling along the floor and everyone kind of... And people were cheering in this crowd, but, again, I don't know what that says about anything because, you know, sometimes people cheering are just there for a good time. They don't necessarily care what you're doing. But, essentially, you know, I'm a fan of hers. I, I, I say give her, give her a chance um, and let her get better over time. 